Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, this is a short review of a new paper from Innova. Now, Innova papers are widely available. Well, I'm in the UK where they're uh, produced and uh, you can get them in the US as well, I believe. But this is more a look at a, a specific type of paper and why you might choose to use it and how it's performed on the Epson P5000. Now the P5000 here is a pigment ink printer. It's not dissimilar from the P700, P900 in its performance. Um, I haven't checked this particular paper on dye-based printers. It should work just fine. In fact, there's a, a reason to believe you might get even slightly better performance on some dye-based printers. But this, I've got a 17 inch roll of it, which means it only really fits this particular printer for testing. But let's start. What is the paper? Well, it's quite a thin paper. I've got the specs. I'll have a full written review of this, which have details of the specs and uh, more, um, more technical information in it as well. And it's uh, 260 gram. It's quite thin, in fact, very thin. Uh, it's a resin coated backed paper. So when you look at the paper, if you look at the surface, there is a very smooth, bright white printing surface. And on the back of it, it's slightly shiny. It's, it's like an old resin coated photo paper. And as I say, it's 260 gram, but it's not that thick. It's only 275 microns thick or point, uh, 10, 0.010 inches. Uh, look at the specs if you want all the details on it. I'll put links as well to that. But let's say it's quite stiff print paper. And this is one of the things that Innova asked me what I thought of is that in printing it on roll paper, the prints, and these are these are ones, test prints and that, they've come out virtually flat. There's no curl. Um, the backing on it stops a lot of the curl. Um, the surface, it's a bright white paper, so it does have optical brightness in it. Um, with all papers, uh, I always profile them. Uh, I use uh, an i1 profiler setup. Uh, this is one of the targets I use, there's a load more. Uh, why have I got so many targets here? Well, I was unsure of what the best media settings were. Now, Innova's specifications suggest several that you might try for different printers. So I might try this on a Canon printer. I, I, I suspect this would be almost identical on a Canon printer to an Epson printer. Yes, there'll be minor differences. But this is using a, a test uh, for a profile using the enhanced matte setting. I've used the archival matte setting. Um, they don't make much difference. Um, the media settings in this, um, for this in this instance, are more about paper thickness and uh, paper movement to prevent banding. So, if you wanted really high quality results on this, I would suggest creating custom media if your printer supports it, and do a, um, a movement test to minimise any banding. There is no banding on this. This was printed at the highest quality setting, 2880, on that printer, and it looks just fine. Now. The paper, as I said, is quite bright. My quick way of testing, I have a, a UV laser pointer. And if something's got a lot of uh, UV, a lot of optical brightener in it, it will absolutely light up. Now I'm hoping that this, and I'm gonna point it over there, um, I'm hoping that this will show up quite nicely on the video. Uh, that's quite a bright paper. Uh, other things don't glow so much. So there's some bright plastic there. Um, there we go, there's a lot of brightener in the label on the box there, on the paper. But if it just looks blue and doesn't glow brilliantly like that, you've not got optical brightener in it. Now, that for some people might be a problem because they don't like optical brighteners. But I'm gonna say that if you're gonna use this paper, um, put it, frame it, um, you don't, one of the nice things about the finish of it is you don't need uh, glass, there's no reflections off it. So it works very nicely as a, just a plain matte paper. But anyway, profiling it, it profiled for color perfectly well. What about black and white? Using the ABW, the black and white mode on the P5000, and I always say if the printer has a black and white print mode, try that first, because it's invariably better. Now, 
For that, I have my black and white test image. Um, these images are available uh, on the North Flight Images website, but there's the uh, test image. This section at the back, at the top here, is for automated reading. Uh, it's much easier than just reading it by hand of a spectrophotometer. It takes me a minute or so to do the whole process. It uses the same uh, reader that's used for the color ones there, and it allows me to produce these curves. Now I've got lots more written details about these curves and what they mean and how they use. But what it tells me is that there is a degree of non-linearity in the black and white printing. You get this with some papers, some printers, almost everything has a degree. It's whether it's a problem or not. Now in an actual black and white print, and I have ones here. Now there's an image that I'm very familiar with. It's from many years ago. That's printed normally, and that one's printed with a correction profile. Now, if I look carefully, because I know I've applied a correction profile, I can see that the tonality is slightly different between the two, uh, in between, between the two prints. Does that make a difference? It might do for some images. So for black and white, I would investigate, have a look at these curves. I mentioned some details in the written article about, I just use a simple Photoshop curve. To effectively, the mid-tones of this are too bright, just slightly too bright, and the deep shadows are slightly crunched. So you need a curve which darkens the mid-tones, lightens the deep shadows just a bit. Whether it matters for an image that you want to print is something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, quite often I'll look at this, I'll look at a straight print and then maybe think, well, do I want the profile? It's the, the profile curve I create um, is just a straightforward Photoshop curve, is what evens things up. Now, the, these graphs here, and I'll include these in the written article for people wanting to see them. They tell me that I'm getting on the black and white mode a D-max of about 1.56 on it. Um, I don't pay much attention to that. I go more by how it looks. And compared to other prints I've got, the blacks are not tremendously black on this particular paper. This is one of the things where I said do experiment with a dye based printer. You may find that dye blacks actually give you a slightly deeper black on this paper. I don't know, so I haven't tested it on that. So that's for testing for black and white. Works very well. Um, color profiling, color profiles were made fine. What about actual pictures? Let's put that over there. A couple of pictures I took. Um, now, I have printed one of my color test images on this as well, and that is what's guided me on the overall look. But I wanted to just try a few actual photos. This is uh, on the Suffolk coast at Albra, a sculpture of uh, some shells by Maggie Hambling. It's quite a well-known sculpture. There's a view of it taken when I was down there recently. And there is another one. Now, these pictures, they, they look fine. I have no idea what they'll look like on the video. They look quite good on the video. They are very sharp. The detail is excellent, but they don't have quite the contrast and punch that I would want for this particular image. Now, I've got a couple of other papers I'm going to be looking at, which are sort of Baraita style uh, papers. Um, much more the sort of stuff I would choose for my art uh, photos, for anything that I was going to sell. Uh, this is not a style I'd necessarily use. But although they're good, they just look a little flat. And it's that flatness that is either a positive or negative. Now, some people think that when you profile uh, paper, the idea is to make your print look like the screen. Well, that's complete nonsense. Um, the profiling is to produce as good results as possible from the paper printer combination with the software. It's not about making it look the same. The contrast range on this paper as a matte paper is relatively low. It's similar to many other matte papers. It's just because this is not such a nice smooth finish and it's absolutely matte. Um, it's because it's such a nice finish. I almost expect deeper blacks and more contrast. So for an image like that, and I so I'll, when I do the 
testing of some of the other papers. I'll keep this one and compare with it and you'll, you'll see hopefully what I mean. So what images do work on this as ever a matter of taste? So here we have a relatively dull evening shot. Now that doesn't look too bad because I don't want any deep tones in it. There's a relatively low contrast. It's a color image and it works quite nicely. Um, I'm still not entirely certain I'd choose this paper for that. So we've got that. What would I choose this paper? What does this paper work really well on? Well, here's a picture of taking a Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast. Uh, just after sunset, mist, um, very light colours. Got an excellent colour gamut on this. There's no problem in colours. We're just not going to get very deep colours. Now that gives the, just the right feel. Why have I got two prints of it? Well, I printed one using the relative colorimetric rendering intent and one using perceptual rendering intent. Now the profiles I make are, they, they emphasize somewhat the differences between the rendering intents. So sometimes images look better on one than other. Now, there's no easy way of knowing. You can use the soft proofing to get an idea uh, of, of the differences between the rendering intents. But I find that most images that I like tend to go on normal papers that I use. I tend to use relative colorimetric more. On this paper, Perhaps because of its reduced tonal range, I've pushed for the, uh, the perceptual rendering, which gives a bit more oomph to the picture. It's very slight, the differences between these two. If you can see the differences on the video, then that's good. Um, I wouldn't necessarily expect it. It would be difficult for me to even show it in a photograph. But that's got the perfect look. It has the smoothness from the paper, works well with the image, the very faint colour it's strong enough to be noticeable, doesn't intrude. Now, this is the sort of picture that I'm sure if somebody posted it online, they would crank up the contrast, the uh, brightness, the, you know, the, the colors, uh, and make it completely lurid. But that is not what the scene looks like, and that's not what I wanted the print to look like. Here's another one taken at Cannon Beach. Now, this one I've not printed before. Um, so I was curious as to how it would come out. Strong colours, would it work on this paper? Well, actually, yes, um, it comes out very nicely on this paper. Um, it works for it. There's another one taken in Oregon. You'll see a theme here in terms of the colours, the light colours, delicate colours. If you are producing colour prints with a sort of delicate look to them, this is a great paper. If you want heavy, punchy, in-your-face colour images, if you want something like an architectural image like this one over here, this perhaps doesn't give the strength you want for it. Um, for these type of pictures, I'm very happy with it. For ones like that, I like the picture. I just want just a little bit more depth in it. Um, now, ignore the fact that depth is one of those meaningless terms that people use when they're discussing uh, prints and stuff. Um, hopefully enough of you will get the idea of what I'm driving at here. Uh, so if you've got any questions, please do ask. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more of these sort of paper reviews to go along with the written reviews because I've got lots of written reviews dating back years on the Northlight Images website and I thought it's about time they were a bit more widely known and since more people watch the videos than actually take the trouble to read the articles you'll be getting some videos. Anyway thanks for watching and I hope it's been of interest.